when the Buddha describes jhana, or right concentration, he makes a few ob observations, but leaves a lot of empty spaces. For instance, he says there's going to be a sense of pleasure. doesn't say no, much about how to create that sense of pleasure. He simply notes that when you get rid of the hindrances, there's a sense of ease. He compares the hindrances to being imprisoned, to being in debt, to going across a desolate landscape. And so when you're past the hindrances, it's like you escape from prison, you're out of debt. You've gotten past that desolate landscape. But in terms of the physical sense of pleasure that comes with right concentration, he doesn't say anything about much about how to do it. He does say you learn how to breathe in and out sensitive to pleasure. But that's about it. So there's a lot to be filled in. Then he also says that when you have that sense of pleasure, you let it spread so it permeates the entire body. He gives an image of a bathman. Back in those days, they didn't have soap. They would take a powder, like flour, and they had soap mixed in with it. And then they'd mix it with water, so you'd have a dough that you would rub over your body. And to get that soap dough just right, the bathman would have to mix the powder with the water in such a way that Every little bas last bit of the, the powder was moistened, so the water had to be worked through the, the dough very thoroughly. That's all the Buddha explains. And John Lee provides a lot of detail to those, those explanations. When you work with the breath, he says, you try to find what kind of rhythm feels good right now. And it's not just short or long. He expands it to be, you can have in short and out long, or in long and out short, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. And he recommends that you play with that, experiment. And when you have a sense of ease that comes from that, then you think of it spreading. Here he gives the image of the different breath energies you can have in the body. You have the breath flowing down the spine, coming in at the middle of the chest, at the heart, and then going down to the intestines, going down the shoulders and the arms, down the legs. So you have to think of the breath not as air, but as energy. You get used to thinking about the different kinds of energies that there may be in the body. This requires a lot of observation. Because there are some sensations in the body that really are related to the breath, but are not obviously related. It takes a while to get used to them, to seeing them as breath. Otherwise, you think that in order to get the breath all the way down, say, to the toes, you have to breathe really long. But it turns out there are many levels of breath energy, and some of the really subtle ones are very fast. As soon as the in-breath has started, the the breath has gone all the way down. So to get sensitive to that, you've first got to have that image in mind that it can happen. And before you try working with the whole body, it is good to work with the body section by section. And John Lee recommends that you start with the back of the neck, but other, some people find that starting with the abdomen works better because they're more sensitive to the rise and fall of the abdomen than they are to the breath energy in the back of the neck. So you start down around the navel, and just have that little section of the abdomen as the whole area that you're going to work with. Pay attention there, and then notice how the breathing feels. If there's any tension or tightness in that part of the body, you allow it to relax, because the tension is what blocks the breath energy.
when you've worked with that for a while and things seem to be okay, then you move up to the solar plexus. You follow the same steps there. Locate that part of the body in your awareness. Watch it for a while to see what kind of breathing feels good there. And if there's any tension or tightness, allow it to relax. Think of it dissolving away so no new tension builds up as you breathe in and you're not holding on to any tension as you breathe out. And get used to visualizing the breath energy entering the body at the spot where you're focused. So you're not having to pull it down, say, from the, the nose. As soon as you breathe in, there's energy there. That helps to change your perception of breath. Get it more in line with a perception that will actually help comfortable breath energies to flow throughout the body, to saturate every, every cell, every nerve end. You need the right perception in order for this to work. Then you move up the middle of the chest, the base of the throat, the middle of the head. Then you can start thinking about energy coming in the back of the neck and then going down the shoulders and the arms, then coming in the back of the neck, going down the back, out the legs. But make sure that in the beginning the areas that you're focused on are not too large. So there's no subconscious need to have a long breath to fill the whole area. Work with little areas at first. And as you get sensitive to these little areas, you begin to realize that as soon as the breath starts, there's already energy right there in there. You don't have to pull it from anywhere else. And then you can go through the body again, this time with larger areas. Say, so combine the, the abdomen and the stomach, or combine the chest and the throat. And each time you go through the body, make the areas larger until you're able to be with the whole body, with a sense that as soon as you breathe in, every cell in the body has already started to get some breath energy. Nothing has to be pulled from anywhere else. All you have to do is think of opening and relaxing, opening and relaxing. Any place where you feel there's a line of tension that's building up, think of the breath cutting right through. One of the Ajahns in Thailand has, likes to hold the image of having a knife in your hand. Any sense of connection anywhere in the body it can be the breath, it can be your tendons, any thoughts connecting, think of the knife cutting right through. And as you do this, the range of your awareness, the range of your conscious awareness begins to spread. It's like the, con the kind of awareness that hunters have as they go through the forest. Their attention is centered right in the middle of their body, and then it spreads out evenly in all directions, because after all, the animals they're hunting could be in any direction. The tracks they're looking for could be in any direction. If you don't like the image of hunting animals, you can think of mushroom hunters. As they go through the forest, they can't be too narrowly focused, because otherwise uh, their focus may go right past a whole patch of mushrooms and they won't see it, because the focus is too narrow. So just think, think of your center as being inside. And your awareness spreads out evenly in all directions from this center in the middle. And the breath is equally in all parts of the body. And then just try to maintain that sense of centered all around, equal. Because that's the kind of awareness you're looking for. You need an awareness that is all around. The reason the mind slips off to the past or the future is because it gets very small. It's like the, the, ro the route to the past and the future is like a little tube, and you make the mind small enough to fit down the tube. Where well, you've got the mind enlarged, it won't fit. 
one of the other images, when you're thinking about something, you do have to narrow down your awareness of the body so you can create your little thought world. But as long as you can maintain this full body awareness, when it's really solid, there's no space for the thought worlds to appear. Or if they do appear, there's no space for you to move into them because you're consciously too big. In Pali, this is called Mahagatang Shitang, the enlarged mind. When your mind is enlarged and all around like this, then when you're hunting for your defilements, whenever they come into range from any direction, you'll be able to sense them. Otherwise, if you're focusing on one little area, the defilements can be chattering away in other parts of your mind. And if your focus is too narrow, you won't see them. So you want this scattershot awareness. It's centered, so it's not scatterbrained. But it radiates in all directions. The breath is equal in all directions. The awareness is equal in all directions. They both fill the body. And there's a sense of ease that goes with them. So this is how you get the mind in the right concentration. Now, even John Lee's method has its blanks that you're going to have to fill in. But particularly it's going to have to do with your sense of your body as you feel it. Try to make use of his perceptions of breath energy going through the nerves, going through the blood vessels. And be conscious of the rhythm that you're using to breathe. And if you're really sensitive, then you can fill in those blanks yourself.